Hello and welcome to The Main Cave. Now in today's video I'm going to be running through all the differences I can tell between the Azeron Cyborg 1 and the Azeron Cyborg 2. So if you are thinking of an upgrade or just want to buy which one and you can't decide on which one, I hope this will be of use to you. So if you're new here, we make regular videos on gaming and technology for your smart home. So please do consider subscribing as we may make a video to make your life easier and I won't want you to miss out. So do hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. First up though, just a bit of admin. I will be using the software version 1.5.4. The Cyborg 1 is on firmware version 88A and the Cyborg 2 is on firmware version 99B. So I'm going to be splitting this video up into two parts, physical and software, as there are some exclusive features only available on the Cyborg 2 in the software, as it's not all what you get in the box. But before all that then, the first difference really is in the ordering. The one starts at $196 and the two at $212, both ordered from the website. There are a few special colors that are individual to each, but the main set here are the same. Then below this on the page of the two are a few extras that can be ordered which don't actually appear on the page for the one, such as the stand and the grip tape, but I don't know why, because these can be bought separately anyway. Okay, so let's crack on with the physicals then. To look at, they look very similar, but there's quite a few welcome tweaks to it. But if I quickly tell you then what's not changed, that should be of help, and the most noticeable is the palm rest. It's identical. So if you like the way it feels under your hand, there's no change there. Also here, using the curved rest, it's the same height off the desk, but I'll mention something about that in a bit. And the tower rails have all remained the same, as have the tower sizes themselves. Next up is a big difference, and that is that the Cyborg 2 has Hall Effect thumbstick. This means no drift, ever. The Hall Effect sticks do feel more responsive as it's faster and more accurate, which you can tell coming from sticks from the one, but I would be surprised if you need time to get used to it. It's not hard. Now on the back under the palm rest of the Cyborg 2, there is more of a color definition, and that's due to the Cyborg 1 having an elevation plate, which I mentioned earlier. Now this isn't present on the two, so if you like your Azeron to be lower without the elevation plate, the one can do this, the two can't. On the side of the two, there is now a selector switch with three LEDs to indicate the profile you are currently on. And then on the Cyborg one, there's an on-off style switch with the two LEDs indicating one of two profiles which you have available. More on that in the software. Then spin it round to the other side and a big difference here is that the one uses mini USB and the two runs off USB-C. Moving over to the towers then, probably the most noticeable addition here is the extra button on the thumb tower. This pushes up the inputs to 30 on the two, whilst the one has 29. Something a little less obvious though is the switch mechanics for the knuckle switches. As you can see on the one, they are hinged at the top, whereas on the two, they hinge from the bottom. Practically, this means that instead of sticking your fingertip up to press it, you now use your knuckle. This is something I much prefer, but really, this is a personal preference. Now, speaking of switches, Azeron claim the switches in the two have a durability now of 50 million clicks, whereas on the one, it was a paltry one million. The caps themselves are slightly different. They seem to have made them slightly different shape, which to be honest, doesn't look like much, but there's a definite larger surface area with the less rounded corners, making them, for me, easier to press. Adjustments are identical, all the screws, which are the same size and use the same screwdriver across both, are all in the same place. It's only a few extra screws, which look like it's stability more than adjustment. Now, one thing I've noticed, but I'm not sure if this is because I've had the one for a few years, is that the two is much more instant impact. There is hardly any pre-travel and very little post. Whereas on my one, there is around two millimeters pre and millimeters post. This makes the two feel much more impactful and much faster. But I appreciate, I probably need to do a bit more adjustments on the one. It's just the two, it just feels better. So I guess now it's a good time for a sound test between the two. Now here, have a listen.
Now one final physical difference is if you look on their website, they have a section called more features in the future, which I'm guessing means they're dropping all future plans for the one and focusing on the two. That's something to bear in mind if this is your first Azeron product. Right now onto software, the headline feature here is that the Cyborg 2 now has six profiles, all selectable by the switch we looked at earlier. Now speaking of this, in the software, each profile now has its own colored LED, whereas on the one, you're stuck with white. Another big feature is that you can now customize the thumbsticks quite a lot, and one of these is to change it to eight directions. In the software, just click on the thumbsticks, then the advanced tab, and then toggle eight zones to on. Hit apply, and you can now customize eight inputs. It doesn't stop there though, as below that, you now have a bunch of other thumbsticks adjustments, including horizontal and vertical cone angle. Also on regular switches in the advanced tab on a single press on the Cyborg 2, you now have an option for timeout, not just a second press. And with the two, you can have it as analog or digital input, but not many games support the analog, remember. Next up is DPI, which could be a deal breaker for some of you. The Cyborg 2 is now capable of a thousand hertz polling rate. This is available using the updated 1.5.4 software, which is the latest version as of recording. This isn't compatible on the Cyborg 1, which stays at 500 hertz. Okay, so now how about my personal opinion between the two? Well, it's easy. If you haven't got a Cyborg yet and are considering either one, it's a no-brainer, get the Cyborg 2. It's just better. But what about as an upgrade? Now, this is a personal opinion but for me, the main selling points are obviously the Hall Effect sticks and the polling rate. They do feel the same when holding them, but press the switches and the two definitely feels more solid and responsive. The switches are a nice touch as they feel more substantial, like a proper upgrade. But for another $200 on top of what you spent on your Cyborg 1, the decision really is yours. The main question is to ask yourself how much you'd use it. If you use the one all the time, then get a two as you will get plenty of playtime out of it and plenty of value. But will it make you a better gamer moving from a Cyborg 1 to a 2? So let me know in the comments, will you be upgrading? Have you already or is this your first time purchase? Also, if you know any of the differences that you've come across that I may have missed, please do let me know. That's all then, please like and subscribe until the next video. Bye bye.